All right, uh, so now we are, we are going to see how we can solve a second order linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients, right? So um, let us just, uh, just think a little bit about uh, what could be a solution of this differential equation, right? Now, uh, I don't know. So usually uh, when we try out different things, so they, probably the first thing that comes to mind is uh, to try a polynomial, right? So what if we try a polynomial, something like, what if um, y equals some like x to the power, I don't know, let's say three, for example. Now, in, in that case, the, the problem with it is that uh, y prime is going to be, uh, sorry, uh, three x square, and y double prime is going to be six x, right? And uh, when you uh, add them together, multiplied by certain coefficients, then uh, the x cube in cy is not going to, um, it's still going to be there, right? So it's not going to disappear. And at the same time, we want this to be equal to zero, so which means that all the terms are going to need to somehow disappear. And uh, because of that, you know, um, x raised to some power cannot be a solution of this differential equation, right? So, but because of the, the same logic, basically, if you begin with any function, like, I don't know, any, like almost anything at all, something like y equals whatever, I don't know, like logarithm of one plus x square, and then you try to differentiate it. So y prime and y double prime are going to, to have like a completely different form. And if you add them together, multiplied by some constants, then they are never going to be canceled out. So uh, the only, so in order to, to find the function that is a reasonable candidate for a solution of this differential equation, we should look for something whose derivative looks like the original function. But that means it is uh, e raised to some power, uh, let's say lambda x, right? So what I'm going to do, now I'm going to switch color and I'm going to try y that is equal to e raised to the power of the x, right? So the, the reason is because when you differentiate an exponential function, you get again an exponential function with the same exponent. So in that case, y prime is going to be lambda times e to the lambda x, right? And y double prime is going to be lambda square times e to the lambda x. And now, what if I substitute uh, e to the lambda x for, for y, then the, the its expression for, for y prime and same for y double prime. So in that case, I'm going to get a times uh, lambda square e to the lambda x plus b lambda e to the lambda x plus c e to the lambda x is zero. But now, now I can just cancel by e to the lambda x. And what I get is a lambda square plus b lambda plus c is zero. So it means that if my lambda is uh, a solution of this usual algebraic equation, then the corresponding e to the lambda x is going to be a solution uh, of the differential equation, and vice versa, actually, right? So what uh, it, it tells me that the function e to the lambda x is a solution uh, of my differential equation, of my ordinary differential equation. So th this happens if and only if uh, a lambda square plus b lambda plus c is zero. Okay, and this kind of uh, provides a way to uh, to always solve uh, a second order uh, linear differential equation uh, homogeneous with constant coefficients. Right? So basically, it's like an educated guess that essentially uh, leads to a complete solution. Okay, now, uh, uh, if we have a homogeneous linear differential equation with constant coefficients, then if we replace y double prime with lambda square and y prime with lambda and y with just nothing, with one, uh, then we get uh, what is called a characteristic equation of the original differential equation, right? So this characteristic equation is just a usual quadratic uh, algebraic equation that is familiar probably from 
primary school or from secondary school. It's, it's just a usual quadratic, right? And uh, depending on, on the solutions of the quadratic, we can solve the original differential equation, right? So here are some examples, like in this, uh, in the first case, the characteristic equation is lambda square minus lambda minus two is zero. So here is lambda square plus four lambda plus four is zero. So here it is lambda square plus six lambda plus 25 is zero. So here uh, four lambda square minus lambda is zero. And here three lambda square minus 27 is zero, right? So these are a few examples of characteristic equations. Now, the general solution um, of the linear differential equation, it depends on uh, whether the roots of the characteristic equation are two real roots or a repeated real root or two complex conjugate roots, right? So essentially it means that you, you need to, to look at this discriminant. So the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. And if the discriminant is positive, then we have a kind of like one scenario if the discriminant is zero it is going to be another scenario and if the discriminant is negative it, it, it's going to be a third scenario right uh so if uh the, the first case if we have two distinct real roots then uh, basically it means that uh, if the distinct real roots are lambda one and lambda two it means that either the lambda one uh, x and either the lambda two x are going to be solutions of my differential equation right well at the same time the intuition here is that uh since the, this is a second order differential equation then the general solutions should have some uh two general constants c1 and c2 right and if we have two uh, two solutions uh with different exponents then basically we, we just attach a constant to each of them add them together and that's how we get then that's how we get uh, the general solution, all right? So basically that, that's it. Yeah, so the, these two solutions are, uh, if you know a bit of linear algebra, then these two solutions, e to the lambda one x and e to the lambda two x, um, they're called linearly independent. So it means that neither of them is a scalar multiple of each other, right? So if you don't know linear algebra, then just don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, so it, it's not really that important. Okay, uh, now, if we have a repeated real root, well, uh, then the discriminant is zero, and it means that uh, our, well, essentially, in this case, a square uh, lambda, sorry, uh, lambda square plus b lambda plus c is, um, is in fact, uh, a complete square, right? So th th this th this would be like lambda plus b over two a squared times a, I guess. Yeah. Right. So th this happens if the discriminant is zero. So in that case, what, what, what we do is, um, so since we essentially only have one real root that is denoted as lambda zero here, uh, what we do is we write into the lambda uh, zero x. Yeah, but then we kind of, so the, the second solution that is going to be appear is the same thing times x, right? So which is why we are going to multiply it by c to an x plus c. Okay. Uh, and the third case is uh, when the discriminant is negative. So the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac is negative, right? Uh, so in that case, uh, we are going to have two complex conjugate roots. If you are anxious about complex numbers, or if you are not familiar with complex numbers, I guess in that case, what you can do is uh, you can do something like this. So you can... Uh, uh, so the usual quadratic formula, uh, lambda 1, 2 is minus b plus minus square root of uh, b square minus 4ac, right? Over 2, 
right so this is the usual uh, uh, formula now if you know complex numbers then then you can always solve it you know in complex numbers or in real numbers if you are are not comfortable with complex numbers then what you can do that what if, if b square minus 4 ac is negative so if you don't really want to extract the square root from negative number then what you can do is in this case you can write that your solution is going to be e raised to the power minus b over 2 x times c1 cosine of uh, square root of 4 ac minus b square now if uh b square minus 4ac is negative, then it means that 4ac minus b square is positive. So then we can take the square root over 2x plus yeah. c2 sine of same thing, 4ac minus b square over 2x. Well, this is if you want to avoid complex numbers. Okay. So here is the general recipe, how to solve uh, different types of uh, linear differential equations with constant coefficients, homogeneous. Uh, so the first step is to write down the characteristic equation. Then we need to solve it, figure out whether it has uh, every two different real roots, a repeated real root or complex roots. And then uh, we apply the, the, the formula, right? So uh, now let, let me go through a few examples. So probably one of each. So the general solution of this differential equation. So the first step is always to uh, to set up the characteristic equation. So lambda square minus lambda minus two is zero. Now the discriminant here is uh, b square, uh, b is negative one, so it's one, minus four ac, so plus four times two, which is nine. So it is positive. So we have two different real roots. Um, square root of the discriminant is 3 so the two real roots lambda 1 2 are minus b so 1 plus minus 3 over 2 so 1 plus 3 is 4 over 2 2 1 minus 3 minus 2 uh, over 2 minus 1 right so the two real roots are 2 and negative 1 so which means that the answer is y equals c1 times e to the 2x plus c2 times e to the minus minus. So that, that's it. It is as simple as that. Okay, so same thing. Now, determine the general solution of this differential equation. So again, so we set up the characteristic equation, which is lambda square plus 4 uh, lambda plus 4 is 0. Uh, in this case, the discriminant is uh, 0, which means that uh, you, you can, of course, comp compute it. Uh, but I guess you can also notice that it means that the left-hand side of the characteristic equation is a complete square, right? So it is just lambda plus 2 square. So which means that the, there is just one real root, so lambda 1, 2 is, is negative 2. Okay, so in the case of a single real root, the answer is y equals uh, e to the minus 2x times c1 x plus c2. So that's, that's it, basically. Okay, uh, and the general solution of this differential equation, so again, so we set up the characteristic equation, lambda square plus 6 lambda plus 25 is 0. The discriminant here is uh, b square is 36, 36 minus 4ac, so minus 100, so this is negative 24, right? So... Uh, the square root of the discriminant is 8i so because square root of a negative one is denoted by i uh, so lambda 1 2 is uh, negative 6 plus minus 8i over 2 so which is minus 3 plus minus 4i right so the real part goes into the exponent the uh, complex part goes into cosine and sine, right? So the answer is uh, e to the minus 3x times c1 cosine of 4x plus c2 sine of 4x. So that's basically how it works. 
All right, so this is how we solve uh, linear differential equations uh, with constant coefficients, homogeneous differential equations with constant coefficients.